What's going on guys, Sunny aka The Random Recorder here, and today I'm going to be reviewing The King of Staten Island, directed by Judd Apatow and starring Pete Davidson. Let's get right into it. So The King of Staten Island is about Scott Carlin, played by Pete Davidson, a 24-year-old whose dad was a firefighter who died on the job. The movie is generally about him essentially struggling with his mental health, uh, drug use, depression, and overall his struggles in getting his life together. What's really interesting about the movie is that that character, Scott Carlin, is actually pretty close to Pete Davidson in real life. Davidson's father was a firefighter who died while responding to 9-11, and as such, the general details of his character are very similar to Scott Carlin's character. And that actually gives him a really natural performance because, well, in the movie, he's kind of just playing himself. I mean, in general, Davidson's acting is absolutely outstanding here. He paints a very clear, good picture of what it's like to actually have mental health issues and what it's like to you know, struggle with the idea of your father's death. It's definitely very clear that he knows exactly what he's doing because again, he's playing himself really. Now while his performance is outstanding, just about everyone else has a great performance as well. Marissa Tomei as his mother Margie and Bill Burr as Ray, his, well, not exactly stepdad, but his soon to become stepdad are great as well. And I thought they all had really good chemistry together. The three of them have a great dynamic throughout this movie. Scott also hangs out with some friends of his and I thought those friends were all really well written and acted too. I mean, like they didn't just feel like forced relationships with each other. They actually felt like people who played off of each other like real friends would. They were just kind of getting high and hanging out. And that's exactly how I feel like, you know, real people would act in that kind of situation. They were just having a good time, really. This actually brings me into another major strength of the movie. It's hilarious. I mean, this movie is seriously really, really funny. I mean, like, just about every scene, there's like a lot of really good jokes. And they don't feel like they detract from the movie either. There's a lot of movies where, you know, really important scenes kind of get messed up by comedy. But in this movie, like, it felt really appropriate most of the time. And the jokes themselves were just genuinely hilarious. I, they were really, really funny. So yeah. Now I will say, the movie is not perfect and it does have one major issue in my opinion, and that is the pacing. This movie just moves really, really slow for me. I mean, it's two hours and 17 minutes and in my opinion, you could easily shorten it down to two hours or maybe one hour and 45 minutes. The thing is, the movie does tell the story of how Scott really gets his life together, but that real plot and development for him doesn't kick in until like the last 30 to 40 minutes of the movie. And the rest of it is Scott kind of doing nothing. The idea is that you're supposed to see that he's a directionless guy and you get it after a little bit. Like they don't really need to keep hammering at home. It wasn't to the point where I stopped being interested or anything. We're not, you know, once upon a time in Hollywooding this. But it did start to feel a little stale before it eventually picked itself back up towards the end. Again, I think the best way to phrase it is like, it's a two hour and 17 minute movie and you can feel it. You know what I mean? Like you feel like it was two hours and 17 minutes. So yeah, that's my only real gripe. In conclusion, I would go ahead and give the movie a 3.5 or four out of five. I think it's really good. And out of all the VOD rentals that have come out lately, it's one of the few that I can confidently say like, yeah, this is worth a watch. I will say it is an R rated movie for mostly language. There are some scenes that are a little not exactly child friendly. I will say that much. But if you're with other people, it's worth a buy. Obviously, if you're watching it alone, $20 is definitely not worth the money, but it's a pretty good movie, so you should definitely check it out. That's going to be all for today. If you enjoyed this movie review, make sure to leave a like, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. We're going to keep doing movie reviews, so, well, if you're excited for those, let us know in the comment section. Also in the comment section, feel free to let us know what other movies you want us to talk about and review, because we're really open to that. I will say, again, Tenet. Things are getting worse and worse by the day, so like it's becoming less and less likely that I'll be able to review Tenet. I know, I'm hoping for a miracle, but it probably won't happen. <sighs> but who knows, all right? That's whatever. But that's gonna wrap it up for today. Random Recorders, peace out.